Guyana, a stronghold for South American rainforest. Bordering the Amazon, the Guyana Shield is remarkably untouched and holds an unthinkable diversity of life. A country the size of Britain, it is inhabited by less than 800,000 people, most of whom live on the coast and have never ventured into the green heart of Guyana. With one of the world's largest areas of intact South American rainforest, there is a lot of pressure on Guyana to log its vast expanse of wilderness. But there is also a unique opportunity here. Where other countries are struggling to protect the last of their wilds, the forests here, which cover almost three quarters of the country, are mostly unspoiled. So what Guyana chooses to do with its resources is pivotal to the conservation of its irreplaceable wildlife. Iwakrama was a million acres, essentially set aside by the Guyanese government as a way to demonstrate um, a, a potential way to preserve half of the rainforest as a sort of wilderness and, and let the other half work as a sustainable use regime with the idea being that the half that you're using as sustainable use can generate sort of enough revenue or funds in addition to tourism with sort of the wilderness area uh, uh, to sort of protect and ensure the management of the rainforest. A single rutted dirt road runs through Guyana, cutting through the Iwakrama Reserve. The journey there is long and arduous, and once deep into the land of many rivers, different research sites are reached by boat, and the dense jungle is explored by foot. Accommodation is basic, and living is simple. When trekking through the undergrowth, it is not difficult to lose sight of team members. And so the locals used the incredible buttress roots of the mora tree to keep track of each other. By hitting the back of the machete off these enormous roots, the sound that resonates through the jungle lets others know where they are. By working with the native Guyanese rangers, including the Makushi people who inhabit the region, Iwakrama is an international experiment in sustainable use of the rainforest. Uh, so essentially we're trying to find out um, if the, the rainforest in Guyana is changing, and if it is changing, uh, then we'll try to find out uh, why it is changing, what are the causes, is it uh, because of human-induced uh, climate change, or is it because of natural climate change? Uh, but before we can answer those questions, uh, we need um, like a very good, solid baseline data. To obtain these baseline data, Operation Wallacea, a global conservation research organization, carries out many different surveys on the local wildlife throughout Iwakrama. A third of all South American bird species can be found in Guyana. And to study how their populations are changing, fine netting is used to capture them. Birds fly into these mist nets and fall unharmed into pockets from which they are extracted. Back at camp, the birds are weighed and have their wing length measured. Their age, sex and body molt are recorded and photos are taken for further examination. Finally, they are given a small and light metal ring around their leg with a unique number on it. Should the bird be caught again, its growth and migration can be tracked. This capture-recapture method only takes a few minutes and afterwards, the birds are safely released back into the forest. These mist nets are designed for smaller birds that dwell in the understory of the forest, but sometimes they receive an unexpected catch. This line forest falcon and a slaty-backed forest falcon caught in the net while hunting for smaller birds are also given rings and released. And as well as the mist netting, new technology is being used to study the birds in this rainforest. 
is an SM3 wildlife recorder, and uh, it has two microphones here. And what we do, what we do is we use it to make soundscapes of the forest. We use these soundscapes to survey for things like birds, uh, frogs, sometimes even insects. Yeah, there's an added advantage um, of using these soundscapes to survey for birds over traditional methods like uh, mist netting and point counts because you can survey for birds that wouldn't typically be found if we were physically out here surveying. So what we can do is we can leave the recorder out here and then we can go back to camp and come back and get a nice pristine image of what was in the forest. The iconic sound of the South American rainforest comes from the screaming piha, a bird which inhabits the high canopy where mist nets cannot reach. Rarely found in the forest understory where they can be caught, they are surveyed using these incredibly powerful microphones. To produce the piercing call that echoes throughout the forest, they throw their heads back and forward with each note. While bird surveys begin at 5 in the morning, bats are studied 12 hours later. Uh, so I'm uh, conducting a, a bat survey for Operation Wallacea uh, as part of their larger uh, biodiversity monitoring project. Uh, so what we're trying to do in Guyana is look at the species diversity and relative abundance uh, between the different sites that we're working in, uh, but also to compare it from year to year. Uh, and one of the reasons why we, uh, we're doing it in Guyana is that uh, Guyana is one of the few countries uh, in the world that still has a pristine rainforest habitat. The same capture-recapture method of studying birds with mist nets is employed with bats. Instead of putting rings around their legs, a hole is punched into a veinless part of the bat's lower wing. So right now this is our sixth year of uh, doing the monitoring survey. Uh, and one of the things I found out so far is that there's uh, quite a bit of uh, natural background variation. Uh, so I think the longer we do this study for, uh, the, better, uh, the better idea we'll get about um, a sort of the baseline uh, biodiversity. Uh, and that would help us uh, to, um, to see if there are real changes in the environment uh, based on the bat study that we're doing. Birds and bats often play similar roles in the rainforest. Birds feed during the day and bats work the night shift, with many species of both feeding on the unseen engineers of the environment. Insects. Insects are vital to the health of a rainforest serving as food for many other organisms and recycling dead plants, animals and other organic matter. Beetles make up over a third of all insects and are the main focus of another survey carried out here in Iwakrama. Dung beetles are a really good indicator species. We talk about indicator species because we can look at specific taxa, specific kinds of organisms, and those indicate the health of a rainforest or the health of any sort of ecosystem. So dung beetles are a really good indicator system. The reason we're looking at those is because these dung beetles live their entire lives in and around poop. So what the dung beetles are an indicator of is the kinds of mammals that are out there in the rain. So dung beetles eat the poop, so they need lots of mammals around to be producing poop for there to be an abundant amount of species of beetles. And so rather than trying to find all of these mammals, which do a really good job of avoiding us, we look for the dung beetles. And the nice thing about the dung beetles is that you put a little bit of poop out there and that poop brings all the bugs to the yard. So what we do is we set out traps that are baited with poop and we suspend that above a, a, what we call a pitfall trap. So it's a trap that's basically a cup with a poison of some sort. In this case, soapy water gets the job done. It's mostly biodegradable, pretty easy to work with. Put that trap in the ground and the beetles will try to fly to the poop or walk into the poop. And because gravity does its thing and the plastic is really slippery, they fall into the soap and they die. And so what we do then is put a plate on top of it and that shields the whole trap from rain or other inclement weather. Once captured, the diversity of different species and their relative abundances are studied. 
This method provides an easy and inexpensive way to study dung beetles and ultimately the mammals inhabiting the forest. Camera traps provide a more direct means to monitor mammals. They are equipped with a sensor that triggers a series of photos or videos to be taken whenever an animal passes in front of it. These cameras can be left out in the wild for months at a time. By following footprints, trails and scats, an area where big cats and tapirs have been reported is an ideal place to set a camera trap. It needs to be carefully positioned and programmed to get the best view of the animals that pass by. Perfect. Many ground dwelling species such as grey winged trumpeters, red rump dagouti and brocket deer are picked up on camera. But the species such as ocelots, margays and prized photos of jaguars are what draw attention. Their presence in logged areas of rainforest is good news for the reduced impact logging schemes in Iwakurama. But what exactly is reduced impact logging? Essentially what this is, it's a very, very controlled um, and a very highly restrictive method of logging where you're essentially minimizing uh, the impact while trying to maximize the, the, the volume or sort of the value extracted. So here they're doing a maximum of about 20% removal. These tend to be high value species, things like green heart, purple heart, wamara dung, uh, things that have a, a sort of a, a high return on investment. And you're leaving enough forest intact that the goal is to sort of not affect the overall function of the forest but also the biodiversity. And that is where Operation Wallacea got involved with Iwakramas. Operation Wallacea brings students, specialists and locals together to study the impact that this logging scheme is having on the wildlife of Iwakrama. The way this logging is done and the way it's localized in the forest, we actually see really healthy signs of a lot of key taxa here. Uh, mammals, for example, lots of signs of, of jaguars and pumas and, and actually just this week uh, looking at some camera traps, uh, bush dogs, which is their first record from the Iwakrama forest and it's not far here from an area that's been logged. Bush dogs in Guyana are an enigma. They are short, stout pack animals that are unbound by territory, making their whereabouts unpredictable, and as a result, little is known about their wild populations. But their presence here is a sign that this logged part of the forest is healthy and thriving. A sound like the wind tears through the forest, but when the air is still, what makes such a noise? A troop of red howler monkeys is responsible. Easier heard than seen, their cry marks their territory, and their presence in the treetops is surveyed by point counts. Whether mammals of the rainforest are elusive, herpetofauna are present in unavoidable abundance. Herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians and the focus of key surveys here in Iwakrama. Despite there being thousands of species, finding them in dense jungle can be an eagle-eyed task. But sometimes, individuals like this yellow-footed tortoise can make the work a little easier by stumbling into camp. So this is a green anaconda, so this is actually just a juvenile at the moment. The adults get up to about 8 metres long. They're not actually the longest snakes in the world, but they are the heaviest. So this is a little baby, but it'll get pretty, pretty darn big by the time it's an adult. And one key factor about these, so they're in the boa family, but these are the only ones that are really aquatic. And one certain feature of that is that the eyes and the nostrils are kind of located at the top of the head, and that's that's, yeah, really distinctive of animals in aquatic environments. About this little pipe snake here, this one here primarily lives in burrows or holes 
in the ground and it um, primarily feeds on fish also um, lizards and occasionally other small snakes as well and these guys as you can see the the eyes are just on the band of the snake um, and it's not so much distinct because they use less eyesight um, so they use their four tongues to determine where they're going mostly in this species here and they don't need too much of their eyes to maneuver around places because hence, hence I said before um, they, they borrow so yeah these are these little cute little guys quite one, nice. one particular thing about these as well is the head looks very similar to the tail and one defensive mechanism is that if they're threatened they'll raise the tail up to mimic the head and it'll actually try to strike with you with the tail but uh, it's not Point counts and live capture are used to survey such a vast group of animals. Hikes led from camp involve simply spotting cold-blooded creatures in specific areas of forest, both during the day and night. They are taken back to camp, where the species, body length, sex and age are recorded. Once processed, these remarkable animals are then taken far from camp, where they can be safely released back into the wild. This rainbow boa is so named for its iridescent scales that shine when exposed to light. A welcome sight to the herp team and a valuable catch. It is released alongside a dwarf caiman. Okay. This fully grown crocodilian is native to the Guyana shield. Unlike its cousin, the Black Cayman, which has crossed over the hills that separate Guyana from the Amazon Basin after a huge rainfall that flooded the river. Herpetofauna are sensitive to warming climates. These studies give an understanding into how the Guyana Shield is responding to changing times. All life within the rainforest is intricately connected and humans are no different. Conservation is about people, and the work in Iwakrama and research done by Operation Wallacea serves as a model, not just to the rest of Guyana, but to the rest of the world, showing how to sustainably use natural resources and allow incredible wildlife to thrive alongside humans. Few places on earth can boast to have such beautifully pristine rainforests and the conservation of any species here relies on the understanding and the preservation of the forest as a whole. This push for sustainable living is an essential move towards a protected future where generations to come can benefit from the rich diversity of life that we have today. And to coexist with these amazing plants and animals, the world looks to the green heart of Guyana.